Hello, journeymen, journeywomen. This is A Hero's Journey with Dr. D, the podcast. This podcast was designed to inspire, to encourage, to educate, and to motivate, helping you get beyond your first move and creating a better mindset today. Now, for an entertaining video version of this episode, along with many more at my YouTube series, go to A Hero's Journey with Dr. D.com. Now, let's begin. Is men's the mess men wear? All right, the mask when men wear. All right, today is mask men wear part two, and I'm doing a three part series. And this is the second of the mask men wear. And what we're doing tonight is, is we're doing, um, I'm doing re- the recap, the update, or the update been coming and the q a the q a but for those who are coming on QA, go in and, and get your get your comments together so go ahead and put them in chat i'm gonna open the chat right now and so when i get through with my a recap and my update then we will embark on the question and answer and section session of of this session okay all right here we go here we go the recap. All right. The recap. The recap. Um, the name of the video is the man. For those who come in on first for the first time, this is here with Doctor D, and I'm doing a recap and a Q and A. So here we go. Uh, the recap. The, the part of the vid- the part of the video, the series I'm doing is a three part series called "Man's uh, the Mask Men Wear Mask of Mas- the Mask of Masculinity" because often often men get a bad they get a bad rap on a lot of different things however they get the rap because they don't deserve it because a lot of times men just don't know and they don't know what they're they're walking in what they're living with on their face and some do know and some really don't care uh, but i'm not here to address that right now i'm just here to do a recap of the uh, last video the last video the topics that i discussed was being a joker aggression and sexuality. Yes, right. I said sexuality. All right. I need some coffee for that. All right. So, um, okay. The men's mask. The men's mask. Uh, when it comes to sexuality, because sexuality, as I discussed in the video previously, Jimmy, men, boy, young boys grow up with um a certain. A rule, a general rule that's that's um that's saying they have to be have a lot of machismo, you know, a lot of you know, girlfriend. You have to have to be real macho, but you you're not allowed to show your emotions. You are not allowed to show your feelings. You are oh heaven forbid you cry when you fall or hurt your knee. Oh oh heaven forbid that that can't happen. But what what's happened throughout the generations, and hopefully we can we can get a grab, we can get a grip on this in this generation and going further is that for men to get a better grip on who they are internally. A lot of times we deal with things externally about security and protection, looking the role of being macho, but are, are men really in touch with the feelings? So when you talk about sexuality. It's kind of the rite of passage is that, you know, everybody makes fun of the person that doesn't get up or doesn't look the part who's not trying to get the girls. But um, why should he try to get all the girls when he doesn't even know who he is? Why should he try to connect with a young lady and ruin her life and her future prospect, uh, her prospect of a living a fruitful life and why should a young boy get involved with a young girl at a certain age? I talked about this in the video. About, oh, everybody see got all the girls. Okay, so what? What does that do for you? M- more importantly, how does it affect a young lady? Men are not taught to engage with individuals with the opposite sex with t- tender and with caution 
you need to engage with the opposite sex as you would want them to engage with you with caution. But the thing is, we're not taught. So child, you talk about you need not just on your not just on your belt, or you don't get married because you have to sow your wild oats or get a couple of notches on your belt. So you go through woman after woman after woman, but still you're getting a temporary feeling for a vast hole that's right here. Sex is temporary. But you don't know what's inside. It gives you a good feeling. But if you empty inside, the outside not gonna really make it go away especially when a young boy is coming of age and does not necessarily don't know who he is so he's talked to told the be a man don't cry take it out in the field but not to deal with who he is so that's what that's but to use men manipulate maneuver to get what they want not to connect and be an idol, but to get what they want. It's not even about them. It's about the man. We need to change the education how we're teaching young boys, how to raise up. You got a lot of men growing up and being real depressed and afraid to talk about it and get it out the system, write it down or speak it, and then they're hurting and they committed suicide. I recently this football player, NFL football player, his boys never knew because he he was told you don't men don't let their feelings show. That's a lot from the pit of hell. It was just killing a lot of men. High rate of uh, uh suicide violence violent death men have. Alright, so that's dealing with the sexuality and actually going to aggression. I talked about example of Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis and many other uh, professional athletes, even young athletes, um, use sports as a funnel for their aggression. And that's really a good thing, especially when you're not wise enough, you don't have emotional intelligence. You, know how, you, do, not, you do not know how to regulate your emotions. So it's, it's really good. It's really good to actually to funnel it. But while you're funneling your focusing your energies in that direction in a healthy manner which is legal deal with yourself off the field deal with yourself off the basketball court deal with yourself off the mat because you know what it may become it may come a time where you can't play, play football anymore it may come a time you can't play basketball wrestle box so what's here what you need to deal with so the aggression a lot of men have it, but how do you deal with it? And young boys are not not taught. When you're dealing with a man, you really deal with a boy. When you're dealing with a man with an issue, the same thing with a woman. It's really the broken child that you deal with. And if it wasn't dealt with back then, then it's, it just grows and gets bigger and bigger. It still needs to be dealt with. A lot of times, aggression, a lot of men... The pain and the sadness is is funneled with the aggression. My my father left me. He never took me out anywhere. I got abused, so therefore I funnel things. I, I suppress it, and I need to let that rate that hurt, because the hurt is is articulated in is suppressed down, and then it comes up, and it comes right up here, and it's triggered. And then the aggression takes effect. You may hurt somebody. Sometimes people black out. I did a video called anger being a secondary emotion. It's a secondary emotion because it's built. It's a whole bunch of sub emotions. Uh, that build frustration, anger, sadness, uh, resentfulness. Things build up. They build up. And pop. And anger just. It's the red light. It's a red light on the car. That says that the engine is about to break down. It's a red light this morning. It's something wrong underneath. It's not just that. Like it's something wrong underneath. It's something wrong underneath. So when you just think about if you're in the car and there's something wrong underneath, what do you need to do? Open up the hood to see what's underneath and what's wrong. What's wrong. But unfortunately, a lot of men do not open up the hood to evaluate what's going on inside their engine. And so, therefore, they break down prematurely. 
progression allows to allows you just to keep going, keep going but it comes a time take it deep you gotta get to the root because if you don't have a effective uh, channel and you have effective channel to funnel that aggression you may be an artist you may be something else then that can take a toll over you and then you have the joker the joker is the, the person like uh, robin williams Robin Williams is actually the perfect example of a person who puts the mask on as a joker. He spends his life making everybody else smile, everybody else laugh, and he was good at it. But he couldn't make himself smile. He couldn't make himself laugh. This is which is why his life ended. Because why he didn't deal with the things inside. He didn't go into rage. He used laughter to make everybody else smile. And he tried to use drugs and alcohol to suppress his depression. And which only made it worse. Deadly. So, it's good to laugh. It's good to joke. But a perpetual clown is somebody who's really sad. All right. That's my um. You go ahead and put your chats in there if everybody's online. Oh wait a minute. Update the update of my uh, next video. Is what I'll be talking about uh, invincibility. Uh, the afterthoughts. Well, I may get my names wrong, but I got three other. I have three titles that I'm talking about. We talk about the the invincible man. Hold on a second. Have it written down right here for next week. As you see, my times are beginning later when I update my video because these topics are a little bit more research than my other topics. So, therefore, you'll get it before um, the replay, update, up and coming, and the Q&A. So, that's my, uh, that's my recap. And that's my up and coming, or my update. And now, uh, we have a QA. and as If anybody's in the chat, let me know. Um, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, and if anybody's in the waiting room so I can click you on, let me know so I can put you in the system. Hi, right, Dr. D. Uh, I'm in the chats now. Paul A. Paul. Hi, right, Dr. D. I they lost their father at 7 and 13. Both had issues growing up. Let me click this on the stream. All right. Hi, Dr. D. I had two sons that lost their father at seven and 13. Both had issues growing. With that loss. Mm. Be supportive. I think you're doing what you can. At a certain age, at a certain age, He's a man, even if he's a man boy, he's still a man. And men can be, and men, um, while some are not as mature as others, have some of the ego. And something you have to have gloves on as you deal with them. It doesn't have to affect, your, uh, affect how you are in yourself. To what you need to do is actually, you just need to. Deal with them like you're dealing with them. I mean, they lost, they lost their father. You can't go back in time. You cannot. You cannot change, change what what happened. You can be what you can be. You can. They have uh, role models, and they have models. Now, the role models that they may have may not be the most, may not be the healthiest role models. <laughs> and so they will choose. If you get a certain age, your cognitive, cognitive skills build up and you can choose what you want to be. So whether somebody in your house, somebody outside your house, or it may be somebody on television or even somebody in a book, you can pick a mentor that you never talked to. You can pick a, a, a mentor that you never met. But you have to make determine in your mind what you want to be and what you want to make out of your life because you only have one life to live. I can't depend on my mama to do too much thing, too many things for me now. I'm 50 years old. So what? Ma, ma, 
But I do know this happens. So therefore you can be a supportive ear. Tough love. Do not treat them like they're seven. That's the best thing you can do. Is not treat them like they're a little boy. Because they won't respect you. All right. All right. All right, Paula. I am live. <sighs> gentlemen, gentlewomen. I've been through difficulties. I've been doing, trying to do a multi stream and um, trying to move around and try to get out to everybody, but it ain't been working. All right, Paula Phil and Tito, if you moved over with me, Brenda, moved over with me, give me a thumbs up, say something in my chat session section. Um, so excuse me, I was trying to work some things out and it will be better uh in about uh, later next week because it was kind of frustrating. The field actually told me, said, You sound a little frustrated. Well, just a little bit. Because you're stuck. Yes, I'm here. I'm here, I think. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Can everybody see me? Can you see me? Anybody see me? You hear me? Well, Paul, we, your stuff is a little... Okay, can you can, feel? Can you see me? All right. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, where do we leave off at? <laughs> you know I'm editing everything. I'm putting everything together. I'm piecing everything together. Let's sing a song. <laughs> oh, the Adam throwing brick at it. Adam throwing bricks at it. I can see and hear you. Okay, okay, good. All right. Um, what song? What song, Phil? Okay, I got it. I got it. I can see clearly now. The rain is on the rest of the song. But I can see clearly now. I'm moving. I'm not stuck. It's a little delay, but ain't too bad. I see the comments. Ah! I see lights. Ooh, I got bags in my eyes. All right. Okay, I can see and hear you. Okay, okay. Good, good. All right. Paula. Paula had a dark question. Yeah, I'm going uh, to recast out what part of the, um, the word. Yeah, I said machismo. I said, you know, what part of the, um, uh, what part of the, um, the statement I, I, the statement have you that you did not hear on um, Paul Lamont said, okay, I'm gonna repeat your, you know, your dark question though. Dark question says, my dark question is about what crazy pedophile or rapist and, and my assumption that this aggression is referred to it has something to do with the mask of aggression. Am I correct on this? All right, all right, all right. Yeah, I believe I'm correct. Now, let me know. Um, so, what I wrapped up to say is that um, uh, what creates um, is a, a combination from a predisposition, genetic traits, environment, and situations. Because everybody, everybody that may have a tendency a tendency to go that direction based on the predisp predisposition genetic trait the background don't necessarily go that way why because they may have a loving home why because the environment in which they grew up uh, was not as hostile was not not that hostile however on the flip side you may have individuals uh individuals who have to have the previous <laughs> okay you did not have the um on the flip side, you may have individuals who have the genetic trait and have everything that encourages it. You know, father got molested, somebody else got molested, then it, it comes down and then they become molested. And then they're in the um then they're in a situation where it's all your fault. Then it become then they're blamed and they're accused. And so they harbor, but what is a child to do? If you're five, six years old, you can't really battle against an adult rightly. So what happens is that, you know, you suppress the thing. Then you get up age, get a little statue, hormone style start to build up. And so what happens, they, they can, the frustration builds up and then they become the aggressor. They become the aggressor. 
Now, just, and I stated this before, just because you have thoughts and things are all around us, just because thoughts come in your head does not mean you need to build a resonance for them. It's no excuse because you have ped pedophile thoughts. It's no uh, excuse if you have violent uh, thoughts to take that on in uh, other individual. Right. There is no excuse for that. Some people have found conducive ways. Some people have found... Okay, good. Uh, so some people have found conducive ways to funnel that. And then as they funnel, funnel the frustration of the aggression, as they funnel it, then they dig deep inside and find the root of it so they can release it. Okay, did I answer your question, Apollo? All right, while you respond to that, I'm going to answer uh, Phil's question. Now, unfortunately, on this platform, I can't put the questions on the um, on the screen, however, but I will repeat every one of them. Okay, and my question is, what is the difference between someone who is a class clown versus a clown? Person with deeper underlying issues. A lot of times you won't know. A lot of people who were not in Robin Williams' inner circle didn't know that he was depressed. He had underlying issues. If you weren't close to him, you'd know that he was one person. He was a person in everybody's cheer. Like I stated in the video, Christopher Reeves was um just had the accident. We got paralyzed. Robin Williams went into the doctor's office and said, "Listen, are you are you ready for your rectal exam?" You try and cheer him up. So. He he um, relished on giving other people cheer, but he didn't know how to cheer himself. The issues that he had that was deep. Instead of instead of dealing with them, he used drugs to suppress him. He he didn't become aggressive. That shifted up, and he became the Joker. <laughs> that, that, that became um, the Joker. Okay, so <laughs> okay, I'm I'm laughing because um, Paula actually stated uh, um, how I explained it. I explained I explained things for transgression. She think about Dexter, Mary Dexter. One of my favorite shows because it's very good in psychological uh, tra trauma and, and verbiage. Um, it was um, uh, Dexter was an individual that dealt with trauma, and he utilized that trauma. He utilized that trauma. <laughs> to be a serial killer. Now, it's not funny. Yeah, but I, the irony is there. It's so satire. But when he came to grips with the desire to kill, that's when his whole world came up because his conscience opened up and he became, he, he started to care. Oh, he did care because he had he had a, he had a um his own um, father's own um, rule Harry's rules and he only killed because if somebody killed because you know remember early in the shows he was killing dead animals and his father said we need to funnel this aggression see that's the thing he has aggression but we generally always have aggression but it comes from somewhere his came from trauma and later later on the trauma actually was in is dealing with seeing his mother die and being in that um that 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 place where there was nothing but blood. So therefore, he didn't know what it was until it, until he dealt with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, okay. So, so that's me explaining. Um, yes, yeah, boss. Uh, okay. Philip says, but Robin Williams' issue, Robin Williams' issue required medicine because he had a chemical imbalance that he could not control. Therefore, uh, doctor, you cannot entirely blame him. <laughs> Paul said he was a pretty decent man. You know, I, I'm not blaming him. The medication, a lot of that medication, is nothing but a mask for uh, for for a deeper problem. Medication doesn't cure you. It just stops the pain. Temporarily, because if medication cures you, you, you should be able to take one pill 
and feel no more pain. You should be able to take one pill and feel, feel no more hurt. That's why people get addicted to narcotics. Because it hides the pain. As it is emotional, it becomes physical or vice versa. So therefore, just think about a person who has a lot of pain, they take a whole bunch of medication because they want to mask it. Now, it may be doing irreparable harm, but they want to deal with the pain. But if a person deals with emotional hurt as well, a lot of people, they become addicted because they want to deal with the pain. So they take a lot of Oxycontin to numb themselves. It physically and emotionally. So if they're numb, they're not moving their sleep. They just want to numb the pain instead of dealing with the pain. If you deal with the pain, you administer pain. You feel, you feel pain. You may feel intense pain, but it doesn't last if you deal with it. It's like getting it up, pain. It's like it's, it's, always, it's always a storm before the sunshine. It rains hardest before sunshine, but the rain is needed. To grow the crops. Because if you don't have rain. The ground breaks. Alright. More questions. I like this one. I just. Uh, uh, yes. It's a chemical imbalance Philip. Yeah. It's a Philip. Chemical imbalance. Yes. But all chemicals balance it. It's a chemical balance. Okay. Tell me this. Was he born with the chemical imbalance? Now, wait, Philip. I cannot. Or she, Phil, Phil says, Paul. Paul agrees. Paul says, I agree. He needed to deal with issues, not just medicine. But Philip says, I cannot. Or shall I say, humans cannot. Endorphins in the brain. Need clarity, need clarity. Uh, but possibly no. You're, you're born with predispositions. You're born with a genetic traits, but you don't have to live with them. You can change your genetic traits. You can change. You're not predestined to be one way. You determine. As a man think, oh, see, if you think you're terrible, you will be terrible. And if you say it, say it enough. You feel it. Put life to that thing. Yeah. Yeah, you you Robin Williams may have been born to a situation where it listed a lot of pain. I give you that. Born to a situation, an environment. And so for how did he deal or cope with the environment? He may have he became a comedian and, and very intelligent at that. He's very multi faceted in his in his own in his skill set. He did drama drama and comedy. You can increase the endorphins in brain. Dopamine. You can increase it. Exercise helps that as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We eat, and Paula, he did seek medicine. It's called cocaine. Paula said that uh, Robin Williams also had also had enough money to seek medication, uh, medication if that were the case. So oh, he did have medication. Yeah, cocaine and alcohol. <laughs> yeah, and but it's um in his circles it was all right. So he numbed the pain. He never dealt with the pain. And when you numb it enough, it gets bigger and bigger. It gets bigger and bigger. And it gets so big he can control it. Okay. And Paula said, uh, Paula said, um, Paula said, Robin also had uh, enough uh, enough money to seek medication if that were the case. It feels like how? Um, Paula said, um, if he didn't get the medication, it was because he chose not to. Yeah, he had money. He chose, but the cocaine's quick. I called it quick. 
Some people want, want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with the process. They just want to get it over with so they can get on with life. Have you ever dealt with something where you just want to get over, just, just deal with it right then, get over with so you can get on with life? If a quick solution for a more deeper problem. All right. Paul, Paul brought out a book. Hot peppers release endorphins. Chocolate releases endorphins. Exercise releases endorphins. You definitely can't control your endorphins. <laughs> Mic drop. Bang. Feel your turn. Uh, <laughs> and cocaine. <laughs> oh, and um, Paul said, and sex is another really good one. To release endorphins. Yes. Feel your turn. I wanted to show my bobblehead on restream tonight. If he was, he, he has a, he has the alien side check. Next week I'm gonna have it fixed. I'm, I'm getting next week I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna work on something else, because yeah, well, I believe it's my um my upload speed is not the fastest. It's not the fastest and um. I'm gonna have to shift to something so it can be faster. And I was talking to my um, I was talking to my computer guy today, and he told me he said we need a bit uh, faster up up speed. All right, so uh, <laughs> he said you wanted to show your your bubble head on restream tonight. He has an alien side chick. That's restream was. Slow too. You see, like YouTube is actually moving faster than all of them. I mean, okay, <laughs> she has one eye. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, she has one. Eye. I have four DUI. Do it just how many times I've done it? Hold on. Okay, I have four, four DUIs. Do a test. How many times I've done just that? What are you referring to, Paul Paula? Okay, give three ways to release endorphins. Just that all, all the things that uh, Paula stated uh, uh, earlier. Um, Paula says um, endorphin chocolate releases, uh, exercise releases endorphins. You definitely can control your endorphins and sex releases endorphins. So she she had to endorphins. Very good. Uh oh, she she gave you three ways. Uh, <laughs> she, she she gave you three, she gave you three ways. I told you. Chocolate releases endorphins, exercise releases endorphins, and sex releases endorphins. <laughs> If you like that comment, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up, invite. Thumbs up, thumbs up. All right. <laughs> Let me show this. Uh, sex. Uh, get me reviewing this. Uh, also, <laughs> sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Releases endorphins. According to Dr. O'Malley. Y'all, man. And it's the same patch today. <laughs> uh, but we but we wear masks. Doing all three examples. Uh, Paul said to test or oh, how many times. Okay, to te a test or or how many times I instant gratification myself. <laughs> Feels I thought we were supposed to take our math. No. Masks are useful. Masks are useful in certain situations. 
But if you don't feel safe, you keep your mask on. Masks, uh, and masks are needed. Is when you don't realize you have a mask on, which becomes the issue. Okay. <laughs> Such as monkey. What's the picture? Uh, where are masks are useful? I couldn't find the thumbs up. <laughs> Well, it should be down below. Well, is it? Oh, it's on the screen. Well, you can't click it on the screen, but it's down below. All right, um, it's down low in like the chat section of uh, or, or YouTube. All right, uh, when are masks used for? I couldn't uh, find a thumbs up. I found red thumbs with the cute little monkey. <laughs> Funny, uh, Paula, a happy St. Patrick's Day. I, I might. Uh, when are masks useful? When are masks useful? When are masks useful? When you go to work? When you deal with certain, uh, certain relatives? I mean, a lot of times the mask is for the other person. See, you. But you try to help the uh, other person out. Is it that because you know that when you got the present, you can take it off? Well, I'm asking the question. I mean, Matt, when you when are masks useful? They are useful when you go to work. They are useful when you deal with specific family members. They are useful when you deal with individual that you want to deal with. And they they're useful uh, when you uh, uh, go on. When you participate in specific sports, you have to put on aggressive masks when you play football, especially when you aim when you're boxing or you wrestling for that matter. You can't say, "Oh, you got me." And yeah, you can You you do not show our assets at work. Yeah, you can't show up. Every, you can't show everything because a lot of times a person feels. So you have to be able to assess what where you are and who you're dealing with, and when you be able to prop when you properly assess that individual or the people, then you actually have a better grip. Yeah, you, know, you have better control of how you how you need to respond to keep you sane. Uh, but you're not sure how masks at work. Do you ever wear masks? Not sports. You're cheating. Or yeah. well, why I'm cheating? You ask. Do you ever wear masks? Yes. If you have enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when a new episode is posted. So you can rave and review about this episode with your friends. And if you forget anything else from this episode, remember this, that every day you get a vertical, make it your goal in life to move forward and never move back. This is the Hero's Journey with Dr. D. Peace and blessings. And we're out.